So now we'll move on to the last paper of the session, and after that we are going to have a screening of the film by Sharada Ji. Uh, before the screening of the uh, film by Sharada Ji, let us have the last paper of the session by Gayatri Shanmugadeva. The topic uh, given to me today is art and architecture of Vishwakarmas. The uh, the topics which we have heard quite through the day. And mine is uh, focusing on the science underlying the sacred tradition. Before starting my topic, I wish to uh, thank the organizers and uh, uh, dignitaries behind Indic Academy. And uh, also I uh, pay my respects to the panelists of today and also the August audience who have gathered for the conference. So the topic is the science underlying the tradition of Vishwakarmas. Uh, uh, to uh, start with the topic, let me give a short introduction of who is Vishwakarma, why they are called Vishwakarmas, what is the significance of their name. Actually, Vishwakarma, the name translates into, literally translates into the principal creator of the universe. Vishwa is universe and karma is the creation. So one who has created the Vishwa, the universe is the Vishwa Karma. And he is the primordial architect. He is the universal consciousness. He is the Supreme Brahman. And out of which has descended the Vishwa Karmas, the Vishwa Karma community of today. And Vishwa Karma, the Lord Vishwa Karma, according to Puranas and Etihasas, has five faces, namely Sadyojatam, Vamadevam, Agoram, Tatpurusham, and Ishanam. And from the faces respectively, we have the five sects of Vishwakarma, namely Manu, the blacksmith, Maya, the carpenter, the Twashta, the bronze smith, Shilpi, the sculptor, and Vishwatna, the goldsmith. And they all belong to, the five sects of Vishwakarma belong to a Panjarishi Gotra, Sanaga Brahmarishi, Sanatana Brahmarishi, Abhuvana Brahmarishi, Pratnasha Brahmarishi, and Suparna Brahmarishi. Uh, they have such a rich legacy, the Vishwakarmas, and in the so past, the society had Chadur Varnyam, the four-fold uh, caste division of Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Shudra. And it is to be noted that Vishwakarmas were never under this caste uh, categorization. They stood apart. They were the Aboriginal creative tribe of India, and they were the, uh, the creators of this entire culture that we see around us. And a uh, few uh, verses from Mulastamba Purana, a very beautiful verse which leads us to the creation of the entire universe. Today, modern science is seeking the, uh, the secret of creation. And we have the secret right in our Mulastamba Purana, which says, Na bhumi, na jalam chaiva, na teja, na cha vayavaha, na cha akasham, na chittamscha, na buddhi krana gocharaha, na cha brahma, na vishnuscha, in short, it says that when the universe was nothingness, then when there was nothingness, when there was void, when there was no earth, no fire, no water, no space, no consciousness, no intelligence, not even the trinity of Shiva, Brahma and Vishnu, no stars. And when it was destituteness and all around and then arose on his own the supreme consciousness the supreme brahman the vishwakarman and he created the world through the panjabhutas and from his five faces he created the five uh, uh, full tribe of vishwakarmas to make the other creations which would facilitate life on earth so the Panjabhutas and the Panjamar, the five sects of Vishwakarma go hand in hand uh, uh, following the fivefold and uh, rule of the nature. We have the fivefold rule everywhere in the nature, our five senses, uh, the Panchaloha, the Panchavadya, then uh, the Panchamukha of the Lord, Lord Shiva. So everything is in fivefold and Vishwakarmas also are fivefold in existence. And a few words about the great Brahma Rishi of the Vishwakarma. I would say he is the progenitor of Vishwakarma tradition or the Vastu tradition. He is Maya Brahma Rishi who walked the earth some more than 10,000 years ago. And he lived in Kumari Kandam, the, uh, the uh, single landmass which existed prior to what we are now living. It was the whole world 
was a single landmass. And in Kumari Kandam lived the great Brahma Rishi Mayan, and who has many works of supreme science like the Surya Siddhanta, the astronomical work, the Pranavanul, the Aintaramadam, the Agamam, the architectural triatis of Mayamada, and his disciples have given much more like the Manasaram, Kashyapam, Brihat Samhita, all these are done by his disciples. So we find a mention about this great architect and builder and technocrat in uh, Ramayana, Mahabharata, the Tamil works of Shalapati Karam, Jeevaka Chindamani, Sri Puranam, and Tolkapiyam. And um, next, moving on to the next thing, like uh, I want to uh, uh, tell in detail about the iconography of Lord Vishwakarma. Why this uh, Lord Vishwakarma is seen with such a post in such a posture? In, usually in sculptural uh, tradition, the, the deity is given a form according to the Dhyana Shloka of the deity. According to his Dhyana Shloka, Lord Vishwakarma has been given, the, uh, the, our Shilpi Rishis have meditated upon the Lord and he has given vision to them and accordingly his image has been envisioned and sculpted. And uh, he is with five faces, Sadyojata on the top and the other four faces facing the four directions and with 10 hands and weapons in each hand. And this is a highly significant form because the five faces as such are not only representing the beauty, beauty of the form, but it has a very significant meaning that four, five faces represent the fivefold Vedic tradition followed by the Vishwakarmas. Vishwakarmas, as I told, are Aboriginal creative tribes of India who were pre-Vedic in origin. We have several literary evidences towards that. And the Pranava Veda, that is the foremost Veda, is represented by the foremost head of face of Vishwakarma. And from Pranava Veda emanated the other four Vedas of Shabda, Gandharva, Natya, and Stapatya. Shabda represents the poetry, Gandharva represents music, Natya represents uh, dance, and Stapatya represents architecture and sculpture. And Pranava Veda, this was the only one and only Veda which had the grammar for the creation of all these art forms and which had the meaning of Pranava, the Om Kara, and the how the Om existed in two forms, as is Om Sound and Om Light. That is Nada Brahman and Artha Brahman. Nada Brahman giving rise to poetry and music, Artha Brahman giving form to Natya and Stapatya, and all these had a similar divine grammar, and that was why poetry, music, dance, and architecture and sculpture existed uh, harmoniously under a single umbrella of the temple premises. That will create a harmonious vibration within the temple that will attract more people into the temple. And the existence of Prava Veda is corroborated by Vedavyasa in Mahabharata. Like he says, Ekayava Pura Veda, Pranava Sarva Vainvayaha. In the foremost uh, period, there was only one Veda called Pranava Veda. And um, as I told, Vishwakarmas were also called the Panchamar, and they were also called the Kamar. Kamar means uh, the name derives from Kam. Kam means space. So, what is the significance of Vishwakarman and the space? Now, I'm uh, going deeper into their science, into the science handled by the Vishwakarmas. Space is the primal energy. It is the primal element of Panjabhutas and space, as per the Vastu tradition or Vishwakarma ca tradition, carries a significant place. Taitari Upanishad says, Akashat Vayuhu, Vayu Ratni, Agne Rapaha, Adhya Prithvi. It says, from Akasha came the air, where from space came air, from air the fire, from fire the water, and from water the earth. So, what do we see here? According to the Vastu tradition, the space, it is it is the embodiment of the unmanifest supreme Brahman. The space we see around that surrounds the entire universe is the embodiment of the supreme Brahman and it is called energy, Vastu. And it is in the subtle state. And through the process of manifestation, it comes down to the earth and forms the material forms. And here energy itself turns into matter. And the Vishwakarma Vastu tradition is a supreme science dealing with the conversion, not the conversion. It is the manifestation of energy into matter or the uh, Nirguna Brahman into the Saguna Brahman. And going further into the science of space, Actually, we are talking about space science and modern physics is now going deeper and they are able to find the fathom of this, uh, uh, the depth of the science. 
this space or akasha that we that is that surrounds the entire universe it is called bahir akasha the outer space and the same akasha resides within every animate beings every animate beings that is uh, uh, in the universal world and that has the antar akasha we have that space inside and that's why we speak and we move and we live so the bahir akasha and antar akasha are one and the same and what is the space is it space space a void no it is highly energetic uh, entity it is made up of minute particles of energy and that particles also has been identified by the great brahma rishis through their meditative powers that is why shastra says paramanu riti proktam yoginam drishti gocharam the paramanu is visible to only those intelligible uh, beings who are yogis so only they can see the paramanu and that paramanu is the uh, basis of all the creation that is taking place in the world that this paramanu is what we call om and if we are in such a spiritual state that we can listen to the sound of the universe it will be only the omkara it is the om sound om has two forms om sound and om light and from these two forms comes the oral and visual forms that we see around in the universe and now i'm uh, still going deeper into the science the the omkara or the paramanu it has a form what is the form of the omkara that also has been deduced by the vishwakarma shastras vishwakarma brahma rishis this om is said to have a square form the om or the space energy is called vastu purusha vastu purusha chaturashra samstaha the vastu purusha lies inside a square and the square is the primary form manifest form of the unmanifest and it is called the nirguna brahman the swatvika state and that is why in architecture of vishakarma so the hindu architecture the rectangle and square is the most preferred form because the energy is in a subtle state and the when the energy when the paramanu when the brahman wants to express itself it undergoes a self speed it undergoes consciousness it is an urge that takes place inside and it wants to it expresses itself and it undergoes self spin it vibrates and it pulsates in rhythmic form and give way to material forms on the earth and even a shilpa vidya rahasya upanishad earlier stapati umapati was also mentioning about shilpa vidya rahasya upanishad which is a unique veda for the unique upanishad for the vishwakarmas and it says that everything in this universe are shilpas that has been created because of the ideation of the mind of the supreme brahman we are all replicas of the brahman we are all shilpas not only we everything that, that we see around in the universe the water the stone the rivers the mountains the trees the plants the human beings everything are replicas of the the mind of his, the brahman he has reflected as the universal forms that that is why it said jagat sarvam shilpa meva bhavati the whole universe is but different forms of shilpa so beautiful is this shilpa shastra and oh, so now i was talking about how the brahman is manifesting into the different forms on the earth so you might be thinking why should i be going deep into the science of brahman when we are discussing about vishwakarma tradition and their creation the beautiful part is that the vishwakarmas employ the same divine grammar used by the brahman in his creation that this same geometry is applied by the vishwakarmas and that is why every creation by the vishwakarma is mesmerizing it evokes a spiritual connect between the onlooker and the object created and that is because he understood the divine grammar of the god and the greek uh, philosopher plato has said god for our geometrites geometrices how true he was what is the geometry how does god geometrize what is that which uh, makes him geometrize and this has also been found out by the vishwakarma tradition and again i have to start from the unmanifest brahman the space and that is in tamil it is called moolam and the moolam only transforms himself into the various forms and the moolam pulsates and what inspires the pulsation it is the time energy the kala purushan the um, uh, puran uh, the shastras call it kala purushan only the time factor makes this moolam pulsate 
and that pulsations are rhythmic in nature. And because of this, the mulam attains an order, orderly vibration, because of which it transforms into forms. And such orderly forms collectively form the nyalam or the cosmos. Such a beautiful uh, 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 hierarchy of uh, uh, pro process that the Brahman, uh, the space goes through to create the universal forms from Mulam, the Kalam, the Shilam, the Kolam, and finally the Nyalam, the universe or the entire cosmos. So now I am uh, coming uh, from the intangible to the tangible part of measurements. Now we have been dealing with the metaphysical plane, the intangible part of the Brahman. So we, if we see the British units of food, uh, furlong, yard, foot, and all, all these are derived from tangible measures. For example, the furlong was taken by making a horse run from one end of the street to another. But in Indian architectural tradition, the beautiful part is that our basic measurement, the viral or the angula, the mana angula, the measure of a finger is derived from this paramanu, which is nothing but the manifest form of the Brahman himself. So this, this table of uh, Paramanu is there in the Vishwakarma text. It is eight Paramanu, starts from eight Paramanu, forms one car dust, and eight car dust form one grain of uh, one grain, and eight such grains form one sesame seed, and eight sesame seed together form one paddy seed, and eight such paddy seeds make one viral, the finger measurement, or the managulam, and one mana gulam transforms to one and three by eight inches in the modern standards. So this is the uh, greater significance of our tradition of uh, deriving the measurements for our material creations from the uh, uh, form of the paramanu. And see here we have the cubical form. Uh, the, the paramanu, which is squared in two dimension, is a cube three dimensionally, and from that cube, when it when it is expressing in the subtle state, it has an eight by eight, by eight mandala. It forms an eight by eight grid, and when it comes out as material forms, it is a nine by nine grid. This eight by eight grid, we call it the Manduka Vastu Mandala, and the nine by nine grid, we call it the Paramasaika Vastu Mandala. To make it more clear, let me tell you something. When a Shilpi wants to sculpt a form, first he uh, conceives the image within himself and in his inner space, this eight by eight, the, the form is made in that eight by eight mandala. His, his inner space first develops the form in an eight by eight form. And when he chisels it through his hand, or when an artist sings or says the poetry, or when it is out manifested in the material world, it becomes a nine by nine gross form, which is very much in action. See, this, uh, this we call the eight by eight and nine by nine, we call the Ashtatalam and Navatalam. The Ashtatalam is uh, in the human form, we can see it very clearly. Uh, in the Ashtatalam, we see the face is one unit, the torso another three units, legs another four units. Together it makes the eight talam. It is in the subtle state, eight by eight ashtatalam state. And when it is produced outside, the, the shikara, the, the space above the forehead, the neck, the knee joint, the ankle joint, the four one-fourths together form one unit extra and eight plus nine, it becomes Navathalam. And this is the final gross form of the sculpture that we see outside. This is the beautiful geometry engaged by the Shilpis in their tradition right from the beginning. And <coughs> and this, uh, when talking about Dashtatalam, I'm reminded of one more thing. Like uh, uh, we were talking about the sculpture. What about the music? The what I is the base? Yeah, yeah, sir. I'm yeah. going to. I'm going to wind up. Yeah. Um, uh, in the in the in the music, uh, we have Adi Talam, which is also of eight beat, uh, eight eight beat, and that performs the rhythm. That creates a rhythm for the music. And now the form of Om, again, I want to mention about a beautiful, another beautiful thing of the uh, cosmic uh, uh, science. The cube, as I told about the Brahman, uh, the cube we have, it is the consciousness, the supreme consciousness as the Paramanu, and it has a cosmic thread of light going through the center of the Paramanu. And that is the, uh, it is called the Brahmanun, or it is called the Brahmanalam, or the uh, the thread of light. 
and the entire energy of the paramano is concentrated around that shaft of light and this shaft of light is what causes the creation the time factor makes this shaft of creation to vibrate in a rhythmic form and this is this uh, vibration is rhythmic and this is called the dance of light and the shilpis have transformed this thread of light into the form of Lord Nataraja, the dancing form of luminous Nataraja called the Oli Nataraja. And I am so proud that our science has been recognized in the world, in the West, where the dancing form of Lord Nataraja is seen in the premises, in the frontage of the CERN, the Center for European Center for Nuclear Research in Geneva. This was gifted by India way back in 2004. And that is where the, the, the path breaking discovery of Higgs boson particle, the God particle was done in um, 2012. So we, we have that particle physics with us long before the modern science has discovered it. We had the atomic science, we had the string theory, the thread of light is what, what transforms it. I, I, I cannot but uh, draw a parallel between the thread of light and the string theory of quantum, quantum physics. Such is the depth uh, of our science that we need to ponder more about it and think beyond uh, architecture. It is not really about architecture. Vastu Vedam is not really architecture. It is not about lines and lines and uh, uh, rooms and orientation and all those things. It is a science and we have to learn the science and then come to the technology so that we understand our tradition. We, are, we become proud of our tradition so that we can uh, take it to the rest of the world and also uh, preserve for the posterity. Thank you so much. Amazing paper, you, uh, Thank you, uh, This is uh, really, uh, you have uh, looked at the whole Vishwakarma Shastra from a very scientific point of view that makes us all proud of our tradition.